Good evening, everybody. It's Monday night, which means it's time to go wild. Welcome to the Time to Go Wild radio show on Hotland Community Radio 92.3 FM. We're also live across the world on hcr923fm.com slash listen and via tune in. If you want to contact the show, do so via social media, Facebook or Twitter.com slash TTGW radio. We have email radio at witnesswild.co.uk. We have the phone 01928 835 291 and text. 07716672874 Start your message with TTGW or messages charged at your standard network rate. I hope you're all ready because it's time to go wild. Evening all. Well, what a weekend we've had. I nearly forgot to start the show. I hope everyone is enjoying things tonight. Welcome to Time to Go Wild Radio here on Hotland Community Radio 92.3 FM. First off, an apology. The text number 07716672874 isn't working this evening. So if you do want to contact us here via text, please do so via 60066. Start your message with HCR. That way it'll come onto the computer screen. Right, that bit over with. I've got a right pair with me tonight. Oh, pair, a, bit, a bit of sanity in the studio. Andy Witchley. Hey. Evening, Carl. And Chris Woodhouse. Good evening. Oh, gentlemen, gentlemen. What what a night last night was, eh? It was a good game last night, wasn't it? Yeah. It was nice to see the lads competing. Damn, ah, should have won it. Should have got it. Uh, yeah. it. It was one of those nights where first period, second period, both so tight. And then it was just that little something in the third that they just found a breakthrough. Just... Dodgy minutes, dodgy penalty minutes. Yeah. Just cost us. And they've been so good the whole way through the game with them. They had. I mean, I can see from the game sheet alone, uh, first period, one penalty. Second period, Wild got one penalty. Um, Sutton got two in the second period. Well, three in the second period, actually. Just couldn't capitalise on those power plays. And then the third period... We had four penalties, and one of them they managed to capitalise on. And that was it, right right towards the end as well. Mm. Just swung the whole game. And I think the other one was that the second goal, probably for Sutton, was the turning point. Yeah, and you know it's been a quiet game when Ian Lorenz has been the majority of the sweet eater in the penalty box, and I take sweets home with me. Yeah. So, <laughs> very quiet game penalty-wise when that happens. But before we get into in-depth in it, let's find out what was happening throughout the rest of the league's with this week's Scores Roundup. Time for your weekly roundup of the scores from the games that we keep an eye on each week. Starting off on Tuesday with Champions Hockey League action. Cardiff Devils 2, Frolundia Indians 9, Lulia Hockey 4, Belfast Giants 0. For Elite League Hockey action from the Challenge Cup on Friday, Manchester Storm 6, Sheffield Steelers 2. Elite League action from Wednesday, Sheffield Steelers 4, Five Flyers 1. On Saturday, Dundee Stars 1, Coventry Blaze 2, Cardiff Devils 1, Nottingham Panthers 2, Belfast Giants 3, Manchester Storm 4 after a shootout, Five Flyers 2, Guildford Flames 3 after overtime. On Sunday, Sheffield Steelers 4, Dundee Stars 2, Nottingham Panthers 3, Cardiff Devils 5. Belfast Giants 3, Manchester Storm 1, Glasgow Clan 6, Coventry Blaze 8, Guildford Flames 1, Five Flyers 2. EIHA Under 18's North 2 action from Saturday. D side 1, Sheffield 7, Nottingham 9, Widnes 
6. Manchester 6, Solly Hull 5. And on Sunday, Sheffield 10, Nottingham 3. EIHA Under 15's North 3 action on Saturday. Blackburn 3, Widnes 6. EIHA Under 13's North 3 action from Saturday. Manchester 12, Deeside 0. EIHA Women's Division 1 action from Saturday. Sheffield Shadows 8, Grimsby Wolves 2. NIHL National League action from Friday. Sheffield Steel Dogs 2, Swindon Wildcats 3. On Saturday, Raiders 1, Peterborough Phantoms 6. Swindon Wildcats 4, Leeds Chiefs 3. Basingstoke Bison 3, Hull Pirates 4 after overtime. Milton Keynes Lightning 3, Bracknell Bees 4, Telford Tigers 4, Sheffield Steel Dogs 2. On Sunday, Raiders 3, Milton Keynes Lightning 4, Peterborough Phantoms 4, Telford Tigers 5 after a shootout, Hull Pirates 5, Leeds Chiefs 4 after overtime, Bracknell Bees 2, Basingstoke Bison 9. NIHL North 1 Morally Action From Saturday Sutton Sting 8 Bellingham Stars 7 After Overtime And on Sunday Black Blackburn Hawks D1 0 Sol- Solway Sharks 4 On NIHL North 2 Laidler Action From Saturday Bradford Bulldogs 12 Blackburn Hawks D2 3 Hull Jets 4, Telford Tigers D2 3. On Sunday, Altrincham Aces 3, Sheffield Senators 8, Dragons 4, Hull Jets 8. And NIHL Midland Cup action from Sunday, Solihull Barons 13, Nottingham Lions 0, Witness Wild 1, Sutton Sting 3. And that's the roundup of the results over the last week. And after the match last night, I managed to catch up with a couple of people to get their thoughts on the game. I've got a young man, sometimes he's the messiah, but tonight he was a bit of a naughty boy for the Sutton Sting. <laughs> nah, good friend of mine, David Pyatt. Thanks for joining us, Dave. Hi, Carl. Great to be out here. Well, a um, bit of a while since we've last played Sutton in a proper competitive game, but I think that was a fairly even game, all in all. Yeah, it's really good to be out here. You guys play really well at home. You know, a nice small rink and you got big bodies moving around. Always makes for a fun game and the guys played with a good spirit. We got out there and uh, made a good game of it. I mean, the scoreline, the end of the first, nil-nil, and then a 1-1 period. I mean, it, it was right to the wire, to be honest, would you say? Oh, that's just what you want, you know. These these kind of games, we, we've got a lot of kids playing as well. You know, we're, we're trying to help bring everyone on and it, it's good competitive hockey. It looks good for the fans. You know, the scoreline... It was nice and close, you know, it keeps everything competitive, one little mistake can change the game and uh, everybody played with that little edge, wanting to win and make the make the play to make the game there, so it was overall a really good game. Yeah, I mean there was uh, some very nice goals, uh, Sutton managed to, com- to capitalise on a, a break to get the 2-1 lead, could have been a few minutes earlier, it could have been wild with a puck that was sort of stranded on the edge of the crease and a um, good bit of, of um, defensive work. Yeah, our defence is really one of our strong points and our, our goalies have been excellent for uh, both in the league and in the cup. Ward has been pretty good in the cup for us and we've got Winters who's uh, obviously playing a lot of our league games and they're just solid goalies, young goalies and they're going to make a real big difference to our team. And in terms of the uh, the performance within uh, the D1 league for the Sutton Sting, you've been looking pretty good over the last couple of years. Yeah, you know, I don't think many people expected much of us last year with uh, the ex-EPL teams and... We made it to the playoffs, which was really good kind of building point for us. We, we got a lot of ice time for our kids coming through. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm getting towards the end now and it's all about the kids coming through. And if I can pass on a little bit of knowledge and stuff to them, then hopefully it puts the sting in a good stead for a few years to come. I mean, playing against uh, some old friends last year and the year before when you were playing against the, the you know the likes of the whole Pirates and the likes, it must have been a, bit, a, a, a nice change for you. I've been around for a long time now. I got people I know all over the league. 
But it's always nice to go back to a couple of places like Hull where we spent a lot of time and uh, see some friendly faces up there, even in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> so um, in terms of the season so far and the season ahead, how do you think things are, uh, should be panning out for the team? I think... Uh, in league wise it seems very competitive uh, you know a lot of people have put Whitley right up at the top and we took them into penalty shots up at their barn after they beat us uh, at home and in our first game so I think everyone's going to take points of everyone and most of the games are going to be competitive so, yeah I mean just looking at the league in general it's that, uh, it's like one game in it and you sort of start jumping up and down the places really yeah like I say everyone's going to take points I think the only problem we've really got is Nottingham aren't really going to be taking many points off people and I know they, they stepped up a few years ago when we dropped down and that, they did get their first win for a while when they played you guys in the cup but they need to they are getting better a lot better they're working hard and uh, they're working in the right direction but everybody else it's going to be good competitive games every time and I think the thing tonight as, as a well-deserved MVP was to your uh, to your goaltender and it was outstanding goaltending from both sides yeah I mean under 20s goal is stepping up into seniors and then your goal is you know new to me this year because we've not seen you guys for a couple of years looking solid coming out big challenging controlling rebounds you know everything's clogged up and he's getting out there seeing the puck and making big saves well, uh, I suppose better let you get on. Bit of a change for your weekend for us, apparently. So uh, let you get rested and ready for the rest of the season. Hopefully, we'll catch up with you again. Cheers, Carl. We'll see you again soon. I've been joined by a young man this evening, young Dan Fay. How is it going, mate? Yeah, it's going well, thanks. But, uh, well, score didn't quite go to plan, but uh, cracking game. Yeah, no, it was good. We battled hard for the majority of the game. It was a couple of penalties that cost us and. Yeah, a few little mistakes which obviously they're going to capitalise on being a stronger team but the majority of the night well, we got pucks deep and battled hard and yeah I mean 3-1 I mean first period was if I'm not mistaken 0-0 I mean, yeah. <laughs> and second period 1-1 one, one. Yeah, yeah it was good like I said we battled quite hard throughout the game it's just a shame about the end result uh, we've got to come back at training work on things and yeah, get back to it for our next game I mean the actual pace of the game stayed with them throughout would you say? Yeah, they were pretty consistent with the pace. It's, it's not as quick as some of the teams have been, but it's still a lot harder than we're, we're used to. Um, yeah, we just got to rise to that level so we can compete and start winning games. It's, uh, I mean, early, this being so early in the season, taking on the D1 clubs in the Cup, you, you've uh, got that extra bit of pace, that extra bit of insight into you know how things can run for the rest of the season, haven't you? Yeah, it's good. Um, I enjoy playing these games. These games you want to play in where they're close for the majority of the game. Uh, we just got to keep battling because this is where we want to be at. If we want to compete, we just got to keep going. And that's now where we're competing. I mean, you've actually managed to get yourself on the uh, the score sheet a few times so far this season. It uh, must be a bit of an extra bonus for you. Yeah, it's good. We did a lot of training in the summer back home. So... It's good to see some of that paying off and yeah, just keep going from there. I mean, it was great seeing you very early on, you know, getting the odd little uh, cheeky goal. It's a case of, oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah, no, it's always nice to score. It's uh, something you want to do, so hopefully more will come. I mean, uh, no doubt your mum will be pleased with the way you've been performing. <laughs> oh, hopefully, yeah. Um, yeah, she comes to a few games and yeah, she seems all right about it so far. And in terms of the season so far, I mean, just a quick reflection on how you think things are going. We've only had three main league games, mainly cup-based, so how do you feel the balance of the play has been? It's good. It's good to get the, the tough games out early, sort of get us prepared for the season. Hopefully we can take what we've learned from these games and battle hard through the league as well and hopefully win another league. And yeah. I mean, in terms of your personal performance, how do you think you've been um, overall playing? Yeah, I feel feel happy with how we've been playing. It's more as it's, it's a team sport, so it's more how everyone plays. But personally, I'm quite happy. You've obviously, you've got to push hard in these tough games and make a difference. I mean, changing coaching, changing a fair few players this year. I mean, you've had to adjust to new line mates. You know, in terms of your line mates, how do you feel that you've adjusted? Well, luckily, we sort of kept sort of the line ball we had from last year, so we knew each other quite well. Uh, being able to play, but yeah, it is tough new coach new systems sort of changing it up so it's probably why we struggled a bit towards the beginning of the season hopefully we can build on that and use them now to our advantage and win some games 
I mean, as a D-man, you have to work tightly with the, the goaltender, of course, two new goaltenders. Yeah. Again, another change, but everyone seems to have adjusted well. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, they're two good goalies. Um, like Phil played amazing today, he kept us in it for most of the game. we just got to keep working, keep talking and yeah, try and win the game. I think the next game we've got is against uh, Bradford Bulldogs. I think that's away as well. So, uh, what do you think? To, I mean, you've played in that rink now a couple of times. What do you think? It's uh, a fun place to go to, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely unique. It's <laughs> it's one of that one of them rinks uh, you don't like playing in, and uh, they're a tough team to play against, especially at uh, their place because they just battle hard the whole game, and it's a proper grind. So, like we said, just get get in the game, get pucks deep, and score some goals and win the hockey game. Well, a bit of a rest for next weekend, so hopefully we all, everyone will be fully fit, ready for the, the game in Bradford. Yeah, it'll be good. So we've got a week off now, I think. So just like gain all our strength back, hopefully some guys back from injury. And yeah, we'll go again next week, uh, two weeks' time. Well, thanks for joining me. Have a good week and we'll uh, catch you with you again very soon. Uh, thank you, you too. Well, uh, yeah, well, it, in some ways it was a um, fast and furious game that last night. And in other ways, it was actually uh, very, very calm. <laughs> It was a sort of very split sort of feel in a way at times, wasn't it? I don't know. We It was definitely a fast game because we clocked with about two minutes to go. It was only half seven. I was mm. thinking, what's everyone going to wonder what I'm doing walking into this time of night? Yeah, that's true. So it was, you know, like we said, very few penalties, very quick. Mm. You know, and it, it was, it was, it was properly like it used to be playing them. Yeah, actually, I've, I've got to say a big hello to two, uh, to two people who I hadn't seen in quite some time. And that's Roy Hamilton and Alice, Alice Stanley Hamilton, I will say, who were our, one of our ref and one of our linos last night. Well, I've known Al, I've known Alice since days back in Hull, um, but they're they're actually together. They're a couple, married. It's been a while since we've seen um, Roy over here because he used to do an awful lot of our games a few years back. And uh, the players got a little bit affectionate with Faye Andrews, our other lino, last <laughs> night. There was a big moment where there was a bit of a collision with her. And it was like, <laughs> thought, I said to Faye, I thought, I said, the players, you know, they, they got a bit of a hug off a few of them. She went, yeah, no, it was, it was fun. From <laughs> Judging from some of the comments from the penalty box, they definitely weren't affectionate to Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Roy, Roy, Roy gives and takes. He, he's he's, he's, he's yeah, thick-skinned enough to take it, but yeah. But uh, you know, it's just it's nice seeing a few different officials coming in to do games, and uh, so I mean, it, it just I makes. Not seen Lorna all year, though. No, I mean, I think Lorna's based in around Nottingham, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, you never know. You never know when people reappear all of a sudden. We've got a few of our familiar friends of the past we're waiting to see back in the rink of, on the in the old stripey. So who knows? We shall keep you posted as to who appears. Our friend from the other year, Uris, hasn't been back for a while. No, neither's uh, good either. No, no. I think Dave's mainly over not on the uh, East Coast. Yeah, it's a bit odd in Russia, though, seeing how he used to play for us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give the officials their due. I mean, they do have to travel quite a lot, and uh, it, it is tough for them, especially when you get the late face-offs. Yeah, but I think they did well last night. They, they did let some bits go, um, yeah. kept it moving. It... it, it I don't, I say, I, um, I don't envy the task of having to make some some decisions so quick. You know, um, we were chatting about one of the penalties, and um, you know, it's like a case of how was that slashing? Well, the, there may have been a penalty involved, but was it slashing? Was it holding? Oh, uh, Pyatt. and uh, Dave Pyatt was a bit confused. In this case of well, the, there's a penalty. The poor referee's got half a second to decide what the penalty is going to be yeah it was just good fun that he couldn't work out how it was slashing him because he had hold of TJ at the time yeah so <laughs> how could he have slashed him when he's actually gripping hold of him and I, I said to TJ afterwards this is to Tom Jackson for those who don't to realise who we're talking about from the wild and I said uh, you were lucky with that hit <laughs> it was a big hit he put in just before that penalty got taken there was one or two there was a big hit on Danny as well wasn't there at one point mm, there was actually yeah. he got absolutely flattened yeah but you know fast. it was, it was a, a good fast entertaining game I mean knife edge stuff you were saying before as well Chris wasn't it yeah yeah it was um, looked like it could have gone either way to be honest I think um Witness, we had a few few chances early on as well that where we could have gone, you know, maybe one, two, maybe three goals ahead, mm. um, and that would have completely changed the game. But it, you know, it doesn't always happen. 
I mean, and, uh, and yeah, it was a close one. There was one point where the puck, I think, started the third period. We could have um, <laughs> gone a goal up, and it landed right on the edge of the crease in very fresh ice. And you thought, has it got the legs? Has it got the legs? <laughs> and they just managed to clear it. And that, as they say, can be a turning point in the game. Instead, shortly afterwards, um, they scored at the other end with a bit of a breakaway. Uh, that has me and you have found out in the past. You know, anyone who does this sport, absolute fair play to him. Can't mock him in any way. Hmm. But God, sometimes our shooting drives me insane. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. I think both teams were uh, getting close to having. Uh, well, both goalies had shares in a paint company at one point. Both had epic <laughs> games last night. They did. I mean, you, you sometimes see an MVP go to a keeper just because they're the obvious ones because they're involved in everything. But last night, both of them really deserve that. I mean, to put you put people in the picture, the shots on goal. A uh, total of 46 on Phil Pearson and a total of 31 on, where is it, where is it, where is it? Yeah, Ben Ward in the uh, Sutton net. And that, oh, that's a fair amount of of, uh, of shots to be seen in a game, that. And a lot of them were seriously good shots, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how some of them, I think Phil did a bit of a Greg Ruxton roll at one point to keep one out. <laughs> You know, so there was a few where we really did think it'd be in. There's a couple where it just dropped straight behind them, and if mm. someone was there just to poke it, we'd have had it. It was just one of the nights again. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple. There was one shot, and it was uh, I don't know how he stopped it with the with his uh, with his knees. He went down, blocked, shut that five hole so quick. It was <laughs> it's like not easy to do. Either. How did he do it? But it's, we sh- we should have known it was going to be one of them nights when mm. um, first period. I think they hit it off the post, and it went straight down the blue line and popped out. Yeah. Oh, I was chatting with um, with Howard Hughes, one of the yeah. um, the goal judges, and yeah, there was one, there was a couple of times where Sutton shot hit the the goal somewhere. They were celebrating a goal, and it wasn't. Yeah, I saw one early on, I think, where he got stopped, and we we all thought it was in, mm. and then obviously it turns out it wasn't. But he, yeah, it was very very close. So uh, it, it 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 was good. It was really good entertainment for everybody last night, and. Um, when you look at the competitiveness of um, the Witness Wild with the teams we've played now in the Cup, I mean, Nottingham went very, very close. Sutton, very, very close. So when, in terms of the, the team, some of the other teams within that, um, the group, were pretty close. You know, it, it, it's a Rizzler. It's a thin piece of paper, short. It's a little bit of a sharpened edge. There's in the, you know, in... Um any other games, they're not going to be taking them lightly. No, you know they. If any of them teams went into it thinking it'd be an easy game, they pretty much realise now it's not going to be easy. I and mean, you you look at the score from last week against Solly Hull, and then you look at the score this week that Solly Hull put past Nottingham, thirteen nil. Solly well, Hull to Nottingham. Yeah, we took Nottingham to with what was it one goal, yet. You know, we, we played Solly Hull and it was a really tight game all in all. Sutton on Saturday night put seven past Billingham, beat them, and they are a good team. Mm. You know, and then we were up until two minutes to go, it was 2 1. Yeah. So, in many ways, it, it, it is good. It's standing the entire squad in good stead for, um, you know, for the future to build and build. So, I know a lot of people. I'm going to. I'm not speaking out of turn with saying a lot of people were saying at the end of last season about why didn't Widnes go up, or go take the opportunity to go into the next division up, but with the whole change within the squad, I feel we made the right decision to stay where we are to make sure we we do have the right foundation to avoid any blowout losses and make sure we can be competitive. Your thoughts, guys? Pretty much banged up. Um, if you get a blowout, you know, and it, it happens week in, week out, players are going to be down, staff's down, fans are down. Yeah, the attendance is going to be down, I think, as well. Mm. That affects that kind of thing affects the attendance, and that's not what you want. I think this is just a good way of showing that they're almost there. Mm. You know, there's just that little step that they need to take. So, uh, yeah. Well... Well, if you've got any comments, drop them through. If you want to text your thoughts on the game, we've only got the 60066. Start your message with HCR. They're charged at your standard rate, so drop them through to that. Or you can drop a message through to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash radio. We're going to have a little, a little breather now for a little music. 
Um, I, I, I think everyone needs to wake up a little bit. I think it's been such a busy weekend. A little bit of Iron Maiden. Two minutes to midnight. <laughs> If I can remember how to do it, it's time for your usual little bit of a reminder of all of our What's on e bits and bobs. Of course, if you want to find out everything about the YKK Witness Wild, you check out our website, witnesswild.co.uk. We also have Facebook and Twitter.com slash TTGW Radio for the radio show or Witness Wild if you want the club. We also have our Instagram page, instagram.com slash witnesswildofficial. Don't forget, make sure it's witnesswildofficial. And if you want to drop the show an email throughout the week, please do so. Radio at witnesswild.co.uk. We have a big thank you, of course, as always, to our valued sponsors, YKK, our headline sponsor. The Sepsis Trust who sponsor the penalty box. We also have Sprakes and Son of Witness, DMH Tires, CL Woodworking, Blast and Paint Stripping, Bespoke Conversions of Witness, and our charity, Stick and Step, who were at the game last night presenting an MVP. If you want any more of the details about the YKK Witness Wild, check out the website including our fan zone section where we've got the details about our own and loan shirts not too many left so if you're interested check out the fan zone section the own the home and away shirts are 80 pounds and the warm-up shirts are 60 pounds check out there fill out the form and you can have one of those shirts ready for you and it'll be nicely game worn at the end of the season with plenty of battle scars to give it extra value right then what else is coming up in the fixtures? Well, on the uh, Saturday, the 26th of October, the, uh, we've got a couple of the younger teams playing. Witness under-11s are hosting Bradford under-11s, uh, 6-15 face-off. The Witness under-18s are hosting Sheffield under-18s with a 7-45 face-off. Uh, the following weekend, Witness Wild are away at Bradford Bulldogs, 4.45 face-off, while Witness Under-11s host Kingston Under-11s, 6.15 face-off, and the Witness Under-13s host Billingham Under-13s with a 7.30 face-off. On Sunday the 3rd of November, Witness Wild are at home to the Altrincham Aces, 5.30 face-off, and the following weekend, Saturday the 9th, the Witness Under-9s a- under play cross-ice against Manchester with a 4.20 face-off. Witness Under-13s are away at Billingham Under-13s, excuse me, with a 5.30 face-off. And the Under-11s host the Manchester Under-11s, 6.15 face-off, and the Witness Under-18s host Nottingham Under-18s with a 7.45 face-off. And the following day on the Sunday, the Witness Wild play a cup match away at Nottingham Lions with a 7.30 face-off. And um, we have a bonus fixture coming out of Planet Ice Witness on the Sunday the 10th. We have Leeds Chiefs from the National League who will be playing a home game on the road. They're playing several home games on effectively on the road they're playing out of Blackburn they've got three games at Blackburn rink and one at Planet Ice Witness and they from what I can tell it's a 5pm face off on Sunday the 10th so that's Leeds Chiefs will be playing the Swindon Wildcats so yeah uh, don't forget these fixtures are there's always subject to change necessary so keep an eye on fixtures live if you want to have a look at what else is going on there's plenty of stuff through eiha.co.uk regarding the fixtures now we're going to talk goaltending because mm-hmm. a certain person in our studio this evening decided wisely or maybe not so wisely to go in goal in hockey basics last night didn't you chris yeah i did yeah and it's eye opening, definitely. <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, uh, I think everyone who tries hockey wonders what it's like to go in goal. So last night, I no. Andy's shaking Andy, his head. Andy never wondered. <laughs> Safety first, people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I just one of the lads borrowed uh, our keeper's kit at the Elks training last week. So I thought, well, 
I might give it a go on basics. So, yeah, I just tried it. And, yeah, the first few shots are a bit nerve-wracking. Then you kind of get used to it, and <laughs> and then Mikey hits a few pucks at you, and then you try and get out of the way. <laughs> um, and to be fair, yeah, as I was saying before, I didn't, didn't see the puck after he hit it. It either hit the bar, hit the glass, or went in the goal. (laughs) And, yeah, I just didn't see it at all. I've got a picture on the screen here, and it's a quote from Eric Carlson. Uh, He's in a San Jose shark shirt, and he says, When I was 10, I wanted to be a goalkeeper, but Dad didn't think so. So, um, I remember on practice, he came in from the blue line and hit a slap shot right into my chest. I thought I would pass out. I didn't want to be a goal in goal anymore. It might not be the best parenting, but it worked. Yeah. <laughs> Your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely true. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, not the best <laughs> parenting, but yeah, if it gets the job done, it gets the job done. You know, it, it, it is one of these things. Goaltenders use every 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 single part of their body to stop a puck. I mean, it's yeah. as a player, you know, you see. P- you can understand how groins can get torn from out skaters when they're, you know, they're they're rushing for the puck, and you, s- you could see it last night. They're going over the blue line. They leave that trailing leg just that, you know, extra millimeter just to try and keep themselves from going offside. Yeah, and you think, you know, that is the sign of you're going to end up tearing something. <laughs> A poor goaltender. Yeah, they've got to be stretch Armstrong. And the amount of times that you see them, it's gone. The puck's gone up the other end, and they're having to stretch out and. Mm. just trying to keep themselves moving yeah. I mean it's an hour long session and I was absolutely shattered looked at the clock and it was 20 past mm. I thought I've got 40 minutes left of this and I was absolutely done in by the end so fair play to goalkeepers and they're the only player that actually, that metaphorically speaking plays the full game Yeah, they're on the ice unless you get pulled for some reason or whatever where you are actually there the entire game. Yeah, and fair play to them. There's times where it's non-stop, and there were points last night where they were firing pucks left, right, and centre. Mm. You know, mm. and then you get a break for a moment, and, but then, the, as we saw with the um, the goal, the second goal for Sutton last night, all the action was down at Sutton's end, and the goaltender can be, oh, I can have a bit of a breather for a second. And next thing, boom, the other end of the ice. That's one thing I've noticed from these cup games as well. The speed, the transition from defence to attack that these the D1 teams have is just unreal. Yeah. It it shows what you've got. You can't take your head out of the game. You can't take your foot off the gas. It's non-stop for the entire game. And that's what we did. You know, that just that one lapse of concentration, got the penalty, power play <laughs> goal. Well, actually, we've just had a message through from from Matt. He says, goalies are gods. Yeah, Matt would say that, wouldn't he? Yeah, he says, uh, Chris, yes. uh, you've you've been given a, a, a dare. Try being a goaltender in a sledge. You know one of the power ice hockey sledges? Yeah. Yeah, because that's what Lloyd used to do. Yeah. And the, the, those guys are just as mad because they actually have spikes on their gloves. Right, okay. Yeah, I'll give that a go. <laughs> so they can move around. Where, where the um, the sledge players have little um, like claw metal claws on the uh, yeah. the butt end of the stick, so they can push along. So the goaltender can move. They actually have spikes on their on their gloves. I want to advance that bet. Try doing it at the blind ice hockey session. If we have another one with the size of that puck, <laughs> <laughs> you can get someone who can hit that thing. <laughs> I don't know. There was one one of the guys. I'm trying to remember his name. The ex Raider. He could hit the puck with a fair bit of uh, welly. Yeah. But, um, ap- oh, apparently, Matt, I hope you're okay after the drinks miss up, l- mix up last night. Uh, I, I, note, note to self, Matt Lloyd does not want hot chocolate. Matt Lloyd wants white coffee. Yeah. Mm. And another big thank you, of course, to Super Sub Coach for the, for the last couple of games, Mark Gillingham, who's been uh, sitting in, in the absence of Mike Clancy, our head coach, who's had, of course, unfortunate family matters to take care of. But, um, yeah, we've had all three Gillinghams, Dick, and, of course, Jill Gillingham, taking care of things as usual. It's very nice. Just while we're on thank yous as well, because I know there's been one or two knocking about on Twitter, um, thank you to our new tweeter as well, mm. um, Rebecca Clayton, who's doing a great job. I know she was terrified about starting it. <laughs> um, but judging by the feedback from some of the tweets, people are really, really enjoying them. 
Yeah, it, it, it is a tough thing to do, sitting with your phone trying to watch a game and then sitting there. You've got to have good fingers on your screen to do the tweeting like that. It is so fast, it's easy to miss something as well. Oh, yeah. And I'm behind the camera trying to keep... Th- I'm, <laughs> I try and keep three eyes on the game, and I've been for the last 16 years, and I still miss bits. Um, I think it was actually the hit on Danny. I missed it. I didn't actually get <laughs> the it. The biggest hit of the game. The <laughs> biggest hit of the game, and I turned the camera, just panned a bit too quick, and I, I didn't quite spot it out of the corner of my well, eye. We all do it. I, um, I refused to open the door on a penalty last week when um, Solihull had scored. Mm. Oh, to let the player out? To let him out. And he actually looked at me and said, you know I can go, don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so <you> can. <laughs> In terms of penalties, I think it's time for this. A little uh, delve into the good, the bad and the ugly. And the latest ones on the main sheet um, of um, penalties. Let's see where we are. Go on, Matty Barlow. Uh, there's, a, there's a few for the the, 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 the the month of October on the sheet for the IHA, but no major updates other than the two big games that have had penalties. We shall start first with the EIHA's statement about the D-Side Dragons against Telford Tigers D2 game. And the review is... At 37.55, there was an incident which saw players fighting around the penalty box. Dragons' Alex Parry was given a match penalty for fighting, has, has been suspended for four games with five penalty points. Parry has already missed two games and will miss a further games on the 20th, which was yesterday of October, and another one on the 3rd of November. And Telford's Connor Keys, ah, oh, Steve Aspinall's best mate of Telford, isn't he? <laughs> uh, yes, Connor Keys uh, has also been given a match penalty for fighting on the night, and as a result of supplementary discipline, he has been assessed an additional match penalty for bringing the game into disrepute due to engaging with a penalty box attendant. He will he is suspended for four games and five penalty points on each match penalty. And this takes his t- um, him to ten penalty points as well and is suspended for two more games. So uh, a total of ten game suspension for Connor Keys. He's done well. He's, he's gone all in on that one. Yeah, if you're going to do it, go, for, go max it out. He's, gone, he's definitely <coughs> gone big, but now he's gone home. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's overtime penalty shots and uh, everything else. But the Sheffield Senators Bradford Bulldogs disciplinary is uh, in as well. So uh, stand by your beds. Here we go. There's quite a few out for this, so I hope you've got your tally chart. Sheffield Senators have six players who received a match penalty for fighting and are suspended for four games with five penalty points. They are Aaron Bell... Jack Brammer, Mark Hartley, Matthew Wayne, Nathan Ripley and William Harper. Senators coach Andy Chapman is also suspended for two games for failing to control the bench and the club was fined for each uh, for uh, so uh, the club is fined for reaching 20 penalty points in the season. Oof. On the other hand, Bradford Bulldogs have Chris Butler suspended for three games with five penalty points for spearing. Uh, the following five players now are suspended for four games with five penalty points. That's Alexander Mitchell, Mark Higson, Matthew Barlow, Thomas Mitrick and Troy Evans with coach Andy Brown uh, suspended for two games for failing to, to control the bench. The club is fined for reaching 20 and 40 penalty points this season. <sighs> Ouch. That is really going to upset Bradford though. And that, Sheffield. But. Well... There was a message I saw earlier from uh, Sean Dipnell on posting about uh, a player playing for Bradford who, from what I can yeah. gather, is a backup goalkeeper for um, Blackburn Hawks D1. And he got five goals at the weekend for the Bradford Bulldogs. Yes, he did. <laughs> so, yeah. So the goalkeeper was playing down but playing for um, Bradford. And in the game against the Blackburn Hawks 2, it was where it is. Harrison, Harrison Walker. Walker got five goals. 
So yeah, you, you 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 can't script some of these things, can you? That's the good thing about hockey. Anything can happen in it. Yeah. So that's our first news item. A goaltender gets five goals when playing down for another club. But uh, I, I do feel it a bit for Blackburn Hawks too this year. They've, they've been taking some right pastings. I really, really hope they get some form soon. It's hard that they do it and then for a keeper to come on and put five past them. I know, I know. But Shouldn't laugh. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's one of our oh, for them apparently now. Matt has said that Harrison's the Hawks starter. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> well, I, I stand correct. I do apologise. He's the he's the uh, Hawks D1 starting goaltender, apparently. Ah, well. <laughs> you, yeah, there's all uh, strange things happen, but, um, yeah... The poor uh, Blackburn Hawks keeper faced 61 shots at the weekend. Uh, oh, it was split between uh, Dominic Jolly and uh, Bailey Hodgkinson. But that's a lot of goals. F- a lot of shots. 51 on Dominic. Ouch. Was it, how many was it the other week we were talking about? Was it something like uh, 100 or something? 100? Ah, oh, dear, oh, dear. But that's what you do when you're a goaltender. You, 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 pack the bra- you pack what's left of the family brain cell in ice... And then you put on the gear and you go in the goal and just go nuts. Chris, would you disagree <laughs> with that? Yeah, that's not what exactly what I did. I went in goal and froze and tried <laughs> to not to get bruised too badly. But mm, dear, yeah. crying's good. Just tell everyone it's a war cry. Yeah, but it's, then, a, it's the water you've been splashing on your face. Yeah, <laughs> you've been sprinkling water on your face to keep cool and uh, keep refreshed. That's what it is. It's not tears. Yeah, but as far as packing the brains in ice before you go on, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> is it a proper ice bath job after for bruising stuff? Well, I do quite regularly after training. I do see random bruises in the mirror the next day. Mm. Um, so I just assume they probably come from ice hockey, and I've found a few more today. So. Yeah, I think I got hit a fair few well, times. Yeah, as you said, when both of us have done mudder and you find bruises days later and they say the medals of victory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it's those people who've also gone paintballing and you get oh, um, yeah. paintball marks and some of them blow up like cherry tomatoes. Depends where you've been hit. Yeah. And oh. Square in the face last time I. Yeah. A friend I of mine got hit. got hit, you know, the soft part by the temple. Oh, nice. Someone got hit there and it blew up like a cherry tomato on their head. <laughs> yeah. It was, oh, it, it was is. ugly. But enough, enough, enough of that. We've got another item of news courtesy of VIHA.co.uk. And the um, National Ice Hockey League are delighted to welcome Oddballs as sponsor of the Player of the Month Award. And uh, each divisional winner will receive an iconic Oddballs obble hat. So uh, they are going to be available in 37 amazing colorways, they've said. So Oddballs was founded in 2014 with two main objectives, raising awareness of testicular cancer and providing customers with the very best underwear in the world. So we look forward to seeing any players out there. If you you get your oddballs hat and you're at a uh, YKK Witness World game, please, please make sure you bring it with you because we want to make sure you get a bit of extra exposure as being one of the people who's been awarded one of these wonderful hats. I'm going to buy one and just tell you all I want it. Yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> so, yeah, we'll have hopefully have some more uh, Oddballs Player of the Month awards <coughs> coming over the uh, f- next few weeks. And if you want to check out a bit more about Oddballs wear, check out myoddballs.com. <sighs> now, we've got a week off next week, so to speak, haven't we? It's going to be one of them awkward shows where we've got nothing to talk about on the Monday. <laughs> well, no, we've got junior games instead. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> ah, yes. We have under-11s, which is a first f- for me this coming weekend, and then we have our under-18s in action as well. So for those of you who are at a bit of a spare point on Saturday, please, please come down for a quarter past six face-off at uh, Planet Ice Witness when you're... Um, Wild Academy under 11s take on Bradford and then it'll be followed up by the Wild Academy under 18s taking on Sheffield and we promise it will be a fun packed evening for you you, know, you you guys come along bring the fun and we'll just enhance it a bit for you with the usual on ice antics from the players it should be good I'll be there for uh, for both of them so I'm I, away I'm not here oh slack I'm, I'm playing with fancy cars again oh, where are you oh. this time Anglesey drifting all weekend. Oh, lovely, lovely. What car are you? 
not. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, the, the, the one thing I will uh, let people in on, if I'm not mistaken, it's under 11s hockey when the, the players have to play to, to set lines in that level. So the players have an identification mark on their jersey or on their helmet or set numbers. And when the lines change, they have to come out on that line. And if there's a penalty, the penalty is on that particular line. Right. So it's going to be a little bit of a new thing for the penalties in the sin bin and the clock. We don't actually put the penalty on the clock. We'll announce it normally, but the player will come out when the stopwatch runs out. So, yeah, our penalty box attendants are going to be having to keep an eye on a few extra things this week. So, yes, it'll be busy. Glad I'm not there because I'll be too busy <laughs> eating sweets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, we, we, we try and avoid that with the, with the kids. Otherwise, they end up too sugared up. Mind you, sometimes I've known players come into this deliberately take a penalty to find out how to beat the opposition goalie. Seriously. Just to watch. No, 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 no. A player took, would regularly take a penalty within the first sort of two or three minutes if they weren't getting a decent shot on goal. To ask our Simbin attendant, okay, how do we beat the keeper? The Simbin attendant would say, oh, yeah, you need to do this, this, this. They go out, you go back to the bench, speak to the line mates, they come out, next thing, next shift, bang, 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 there'd be a good shot on goal, or sometimes even a goal. Friend said, I should have got an assist on that one. <laughs> she would actually tell them how to beat never the keeper. Put anyone knowledgeable in the penalty box. Yes. <laughs> the thing is, it, it kind of worked to our advantage at times. It was, it was just one of these things. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. I'd be telling them shoot three foot to the left. Not confusing. Ah, oh, <laughs> no, no. But um, no, I, I was um, chatting to a couple of the parents of um, some of my juniors and saying how how pleased they've been with the the performance of all the under, you know, all, all our junior academy teams all the way through. I mean. I think the team that has the hardest task is the 18s. Yeah. You, know, you think about it, a lot of 18s have been playing through their respective academies, and ours is a new team. So there's a mix of people who've got experience to having just jet, you know, come up through the ranks or maybe started at 15s level. Yeah. And, or they're playing up from 15s. It's... I mean, you, you it's full, play. It's full contact as well, under it is. 18s, which I actually didn't know about until I watched a match uh, probably a month or so ago. Mm. And there were some big hits going in there on some some small small guys as well. But then, one, I, th- I don't know who it was, one of the smallest players on Witness under 18s team was giving out the biggest hits. Yeah. And we were like, who's that guy? Who mm. is it? Because he's, he's just throwing his weight around. Yeah, I um, mean... A lot of it as well for the uh, as they get into full contact, they've got to keep their heads as well, and you can see them come in the sim bin. They're they're so you can see the adrenaline's pumping, and they're getting quite angry about it. And then the key is getting to focus the anger into not being anger, but being a way of getting your own back in the right way. Yeah, by making a good play, by making a good hit, by making a goal. Yeah, rather than going out and just. I'll blow it. I'll just level the guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that's only going to land you back in one place. Isn't yeah, it? <laughs> you only end up on our uh, good, the bad, and the ugly list. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and um, you, you're seeing them playing, and particularly when I mean our thirteens are a gang of nutters. You don't want to come <laughs> off the ice, and even at the fifteens, you can see them. And it, mind you, the nines, <laughs> they're like yeah. tiny terrors. They come on the ice, and you have to have the buzzer to tell them to change lines. Yeah. Because they won't stop. Yeah. They literally will not stop. One of my friend's uh, sons plays for the under nines. And, uh, yeah, he he shows us videos of him sometimes. And he's like a blur. You can, you can barely see him. He's that fast. He's just, yeah, yeah. running everyone ragged on the ice. And, uh, and, yeah, it's good to see because they're obviously enjoying it. Yeah, I mean, as well. And some of the some of the parents are saying how much you know they've seen their kids grow in themselves, their confidence and fitness and everything. They they, they just love to come out and play. Yeah, they're like a different person on the ice sometimes. Mm. Literally put put the helmet and skates and gloves on, and yeah, they yeah. kind of come alive a bit. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. like a little costume to give them an extra personality. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I mean, you, you, you've, you're also one of Pucker's minders this year, but yeah. so uh, you know, you, you're, you're understanding how he thinks this year, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I was 
trying to keep him out of trouble yesterday. Um, <laughs> he was he, he was trying to wind up well. So he, he did get a couple of nice hellos off the off the um, opposition players. He did, yeah. Um, I think Pat says that to everyone though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. It, it's kind of, I think, more satisfying for him when. Uh, when he just waves at them in the penalty box and you can see the <laughs> grind in the teeth. <laughs> That's probably more satisfying for him. But, yeah, he's uh, yeah, just trying to keep him out of trouble and, yeah, stop him scaring some of the kids. Oh, I think one in particular, every time he walked past and waved, just started crying. Oh, so. because I could see yeah. a few of the kids last night were coming up to pucker and they're standing off and the next thing you'd wave and they're like, oh, and yeah, so excited. Yeah. Yeah. But I think he needs to change his diet. Howard Smith, you know, he, he keeps trying to get eaten by Pucker, or does he keep trying to get himself eaten by Pucker? I think, I don't know. He, he kind of he goes in for a hug, and then Pucker just decides it might be a good idea to eat him, and then mm. Howard realizes that he can't get away that easily. <laughs> so, ah, uh, uh, well, I did put a message on saying Pucker, be careful. You don't know where he's been. Well, there is always that. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're almost at the end of another show. Not even time for another song. Andy, it's uh, going to be an interesting weekend for you. Yep, as always. <laughs> always up to something daft. Busy weekend for me, looking after uh, announcing and due teaser for the junior hockey. Yeah. Back again on uh, for more next week. So, And then a coffee on Wednesday. <laughs> But in the meantime, we're about out of time. Not even time for the jingle. So we're going to say good night. Catch you all again soon. Enjoy your hockey wherever you are. It's time to hand you over to Sky News for another week. Till next week, ta-ra.